Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be tackling part 3 of solo exploration and tonight I'm going to be basically explaining to you guys which are the most profitable areas of um, exploration, of solo exploration and scanning and, uh, and hacking relic and data sites and where you can get most of the ISK from and it, it's pretty important because you know the uh, sites are rare there's scarcity for that matter and although people have been complaining I must say I find it to be a good thing um well the sites being rare themselves means that the prices of the modules and the items uh, that you get to loot from these sites have a price I'd say above average and uh, are quite big and that's good it means solo exploration is a profitable business if the spawn increase of these sites would be greater uh, then it would create a surplus of items uh, that would literally flood the market and will just cause prices to crash it's basic principles of economics so the way it is now it's probably the best way but, uh, honestly, I do expect some prices to crash once I do this reveal of today because, well, most of you will be probably flocking to these areas and trying to extort as much isk as possible. But keep in mind, you'll probably not be alone because, well, there's going to be everyone else. So, um, take care and fly safe and try not to shoot each other too much. No, I'm just kidding, you can just blow each other up as much as you like. Although that would help, you know, the market and economics, it's not going to be uh, the case because, well, we have the insurance system. Anyway, uh, before we start with announcing the three lucky winners of the Omega Combos that we have, you know, the giveaway that we started uh, a week ago, uh, I have an important announcement for the players that have started playing the Lend Lease program. You know, the, the, the program that you just share your ships with some NPCs and you send them on a mission and you expect them to come back uh, in one piece. They do come back in one piece, but most of the times is without any rigs and without any fit. Uh, sometimes even without the Nanocore. Uh, there have been a couple of instances where the ships with Nanocores have returned fitless. But that was, there's also plenty of instances where the ships just came back bare, completely stripped of anything. And all the items and stuff that was on it is not separately somewhere inside the hangar or the items hold inside the station. No, it's nowhere to be seen lost to eternity. Well, it's funny because, you know, when you start to do the next program, the Land Lease program, uh, there was an NPC conversation that uh, with uh, a lady that practically assured you that nothing will happen to the ship. <laughs> I'm actually starting to question if maybe this was all intended and the developers just wanted to give everyone a taste of what it's like to give out ships to strangers. <laughs> In any case, there was an exploit with the Lend Lease program that you you could use faction ships to circumvent any of the tech level 10, tech level 9 requirements and you would get maximum amount of points of satisfaction from the NPCs. Well, because the faction ships are techless, uh, they have tech level 0, uh, I think the tech level has been completely removed now and uh, the void of tech level. Uh, which means that the game, or at least the, the feature of Land Lease, does not know how to interpret the faction chips and just gives out maximum amounts of satisfaction points if you just feed it um, a faction ships. But be careful not to use, I don't know, your main symbols and your main stratios and I don't know, the stuff that's really expensive and do have expensive bits because, well, thanks to the bug uh, currently, you might end up with no fit at all. On the other hand, I must say I'm quite happy because I was able to pick most of the ships that I don't use that don't even have a fit and they just sat there. Um, I think they, was, they were also repackaged. <laughs> so I... Well, the NPCs were asking for ships. I gave them ships. Didn't say anything about fitting. So I just gave them fitless ships. I, I practically send them to their deaths. I should create a company. Should call it Chica's Flying Coffins. What a death trap. 
<laughs> Enough with the laughs, let's move on to some serious business. Uh, let's pick our three winners for today. Let's see who gets the uh, three Omega combos. And random.org picked us three lucky winners. First winner is Michal W. Proker. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, mate. Sorry for that. Uh, with the comment, I believe that both developers and Eve Echo's budget holders already see the impact of their incorrect decision so far. Whether they will actually learn from those mistakes, it is yet to be seen by us. First, medium big change they introduce or quality of the next event will tell us a lot whether they actually took it to their hearts or not. Congratulations, Michal. You won a 30-day Omega combo. Uh, you'll be receiving this hopefully by the end of next week, probably sooner. Moving over to the second winner of the day, uh, we've got David Sterling. With the comment, I'm trying to stay optimistic about the game developers bringing more content to the game and balancing the issues that are already in the game, but their version of content has been cash grab events and music. And instead of small fixes like once a month, they are doing large fixes once a year, leaving the game in its current state. I'm hoping the devs are going to not only bring better quality of life, little things like being able to divide hangers into different sections, but also new forms of PvE. Not just kill wave spawn after wave spawn, maybe throw in mineral PI sinks instead of just ISK sinks in terms of building, uh, but we will see if the developers are really going to listen to their player base at all. But of course, got to wait until April or May to find out. LOL. Congratulations, David. You just won uh, the second 30 day Omega combo. Move over to our third winner, which is none other than Devendra Hadke. Uh, hope I pronounced it correctly. I have just started exploration, and this video has helped me a lot. Uh, questions answer I do believe that devs will do positive changes, but somehow they seem to be focused on capital a bit more, and they should introduce more events where Plex and Ore doesn't give you very good stuff as it has driven Plex price so high that it is hard for even a T7 player to maintain a basic Omega. Well, I'd say having Plex price high is kind of in their interest. Currently, Eve Echoes is not a perfect example of player first, that's for certain. Congratulations, Devendra. Congratulations to all three winners. And congratulations and thank you for participating to all who participated and dropped a comment. I've read every comment and uh, I must say I'm quite happy with you guys being involved. Stay tuned until the end of the video because that's where we will have our next community question of the week. So let's move on to the main content, the main dish for tonight, which is which of the New Eden areas is most profitable in terms of solo exploration and its corresponding ISK conversion. Well, I must say that in two weeks of testing, I've been to all of the regions. I've scanned everything that I could have scanned, well, humanly possible, of course. I've been to the south, been to the north, been to the east, and I've been to the west. I've also scanned in Losec. You won't find um, high quality sites in low sec or at least in empire space so not that much you will you will find some low grade stuff but the juicy part sits in no sec and you know that because in the previous episode of solo exploration guys we talked about the highest quality sites that you might get and honestly during the scanning testing whatever i did the number of these sites that I encounter is relatively small, but I did found the runner-ups and I did found the sites that sit in immediate vicinity in terms of quality. And the numbers speak for themselves. Two days worth of roaming and two days intermittent play, like two hours in a day because I can't afford uh, the time to just sit glued to the screen for two hours uh, constantly. I usually play for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes at best. Then I have to close, I have to do some other stuff. Then I get back to it and do some more stuff. And that's how pretty much the testing went. So in two days time, I managed to find around 800 million in two days. Uh, then I came back home, then I started exploring again, and then I came back home 
with the astonishing cargo value of 1.2 billion. Now, both of these roams were good, but on one roam I got better, and this um, kind of had me like thinking, okay, why? So I went to the test server and I, I did a bunch of these sites, and I, I pretty much tried the same quality site over different factions, the different uh, the five different parrot factions, to see which one of those has the best drops. And so far I can state the following. The blue rig materials, uh, they're pretty much RNG. Uh, also the decrypt drops are pretty much RNG. But I did saw an increase, um, or at least in the quality and uh, the payout of the items that I found inside. I'd say the Blood Raiders are the most profitable faction in terms of uh, scanning and solo exploration in terms of relic and data sites and the runner-up uh, would be the Serpentis which is located in the west of the map um, the Blood Raiders are to the south southwest these two areas these are the most profitable regions or at least sections of New Eden um, that give the greatest payout in terms of items such as decryptors, blue materials, rig blueprints. And of course, it's pretty obvious that the 1.2 billion I made while I was in the Blood Raider regions. Now, you might see this as anecdotal evidence. It could be anecdotal evidence. I did not manage to run 100 sites for each of the faction uh, on the test server just to be able to confirm this result statistically I, I I don't know proper probability and proper statistics but I think running five sites for each faction and trying to determine which of these got the best results is still okay with me anyway on the test server is a lot different than on the live server because well on the test server I can you know manipulate things and uh have the same site spawn so I would have equal comparison terms while on the live server you might find the best quality site on Serpentis or on Garistas and get like 500 million just from one single site while the next week you get to spend the entire week in Blood Raider space and you only get shitty quality uh, relic and data sites and you manage to amount the same 500 million but in seven days instead of just one site so it's kind of biased on the live server it's a lot more difficult to control and to uh, determine uh, where exactly the rabbit might pop up and how you'd get the most profit out of but i think the most important aspect is for you to have fun and to enjoy scanning and moving from system to system like a true explorer um, regardless if you're an angel space if you're in serpentis and Gristus and blood raider space you can just move along the map uh, as you go create your routes on the fly and have fun find size try to stay alive keep away from bubbles and from gate camps if you're not using interceptors if you're using interceptors, I don't know, try to stay alive while you're scanning and, of course, you're not cloaked and you're not paying attention to, <laughs> to local. Watch out for other people using Asteros because they might try to gank you when you're running these sites in your interceptor. Watch out for other interceptor pilots doing the same thing as you do. All in all, I wish you Godspeed and have as much fun as possible and get as much isk as possible. And we've reached that part of the video where we have to announce the next community question of the week. And it's going to be a bit tied to the answers that we got from the previous question because I'd say it will be a bit unfair because you guys had hopes, you guys had dreams, and I even I had hopes it, it will be better considering the two uh, important things that developers did with the uh, dev road. Um, with the dev roundtable and the developers letter and you know my previous video was a bit I don't know, a kind of a shit post I was actually expecting for the content to be better I did some predictions that's the funny part because I was expecting to have to create an apology video uh, because the content would turn out to be awesome right 
But the sad part is, well, I don't need to do an apology video. The sad part is that 90% of what I predicted in the honest patch notes review, I, I, I would say I'm disappointed of myself, but I'm not disappointed of myself. I, I actually did a good thing. I'm disappointed in what they promised uh, versus what they delivered. I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but that's just how I feel. And I think the sadness inside is just keeps growing. Even though I'm funny, even though I'm throwing jokes and I don't know, weird clips uh, everywhere, it's not looking good. So enough of my nonsense. The next community question of the week is... What do you think about the Lend Lease program? Do you think it's going to be something amazing that they will keep? The question is pretty much unfair because some of you might have already been affected by the bug that we talked about at the beginning of the video. Fear not, drop a su support ticket and uh, fingers crossed, I'm 100% sure you'll probably get your stuff back. Don't forget that in order to have a valid participation in the giveaway, you must include the in-game name of your character and of course your character ID that's located, I think both of these are located in the character screen. Uh, drop them inside your comment as well because it will help me to forward this information to the people responsible in handling your prizes so you will receive your prizes in time. That's it for today. I hope you guys learned something. Thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.